Happy Sunday, everyone. A few weeks ago, we built our very own rate of change indicator. We made this indicator a little bit smarter by doing two things. We turned the basic ROC that's built inside of Thinkorswim into an oscillator. This allowed us to notice what's in an extreme region and what's just chopping around sideways. So that was improvement number one. And improvement number two was we added these bull and bearish signals as well, which allowed us to know when that rate of change is making a move up using the RSI's breakout signal. You can watch the full tutorial for free on our website and download the indicator code by clicking this big green button, which you'll need to follow along this tutorial. As part of this tutorial, we'll be taking one of our users' feedbacks, which is on the ROC tutorial, Harley asked, how would you go about scanning when we do have either the bull or the bear signal, or we're in one of these extreme areas? In today's video, we'll be doing just that, turning the ROC indicator into a scan. Again, you will need the indicator code to follow along. You can download that on our website, tosindicators.com slash indicator slash rate hyphen of hyphen change, and there click this download button to download the indicator code, which you'll need to follow along. Now, once you have the code and the indicators imported into your platform, we can start by copy pasting all of the ROC indicators code. Here I've clicked control A and control C which we can use this as a starting point for our scan. Coming into the scan tab, click add filter and there select study. One quick note here, custom study filters are available or supported only in the live money version of Thinkorswim, not the paper trading version. So you will need a live money to follow along as well. Now inside of the custom study filter, scroll down and select custom. There inside of custom, choose the ThinkScript editor tab and paste in all of the indicator code that we just copied. Now here you'll be faced with an error, which is exactly one plot expected. And that's because the Thinkorswim scan tab is looking for only one plot variable. You'll notice inside of this indicator code, we have multiple for each signal. If we come up, we have multiple for each one of the horizontal lines on our chart, along with the actual ROC. All of those need to be turned into def variables for this code to compile. So there, I'll turn the ROC code into a def variable and remove all of the formatting code associated with it. Same thing for our next batch of variables here. Turn those into def variables and remove all of the formatting code associated with it. Now we have the final two variables right down here, which are our bull and our bear signals. Now here, we can alternate which variable we turn to a def variable based on which signal you're looking to scan for. So if I say turned the bear signal to a def and just the bull signal here, then that would search only for this condition inside of the watch list that we selected. So let's start by testing that. I'll click OK here and I'll change our time frame to a weekly time frame. So what we're scanning for is a bull signal appearing on the weekly time frame. And I'm scanning inside of the weekly's watch list, which is inside of the public tab at the very bottom. Now, if we click scan, Let's see what results we have using the weekly time frame. Here inside of the list, we see we have a lot of silver related ETFs, gold related ETFs, and metals ETFs, along with Bitcoin, the Bitcoin BITO ETF. So let's test some of these. We'll start with SLV here first. On a weekly time frame chart of SLV, we do in fact see a bull signal plotting. So we know that that condition helped us find a place where this is true with something that has weekly options. Now let's check BITO. BITO also on the weekly time frame. We see this plotting. Let's try GDX here. GDX, we also see this plotting. So we know that the scan is finding places on the weekly time frame the way we would expect. Now here's our weekly list for those of you looking for places in which using this past week's bullish activity, where do we see the rate of change that's going from a period of declining to starting to stabilize and the RSI is showing us a bullish breakout signal. Now there's one other caveat that I think you should be aware of when you're running scans inside of Thinkorswim. And I think the best way I can show you is by demonstrating it. So let's change our bull signal here to say a bear signal. And let's change our time frame from a weekly time frame to a 30 minute time frame. And I'll turn extended hours off. Now if I run this scan inside of the same watch list, you'll notice that we get back a list of stocks. And on that list of stocks, the first one that stands out is Apple. Now, if I come into a chart of Apple here, 
When we come into a 30 minute time frame chart using the default time period that I have, we don't see any bear signals plotting on our charts here. The reason for that is the scan tab has much more limited historical access to data compared to what I think most folks have as default values on their chart. Here I've given this 30 minutes, but 90 days worth of historical data. Instead, if I shrunk that down to something like say 15 days and then click OK, we do in fact see the bear signal plotting, which is something more reasonable that the scan tab has access to. So you'll need to keep that in mind. Whenever you see something on your scan plotting, make sure that you've given your charts enough or just the right amount of historical data to make sure that your signals align. This is why I find using the larger time frame charts a little bit better on the scan tab. They're also a little bit more reliable. The weekly I think has access to enough for giving historical data that for the most part, it fits within the normal criteria three plus years. The daily I've noticed is something like a one year historical access. So you may need to adjust your charts for that. I think the one year is the default value in thinkorswim, but some of you I know give it a little bit more period. So that's how you can scan for both bullish and bearish signals. Now, let's say you wanted to scan only for the extreme period, not when, say, this reversal is happening. The way you would do that is by coming in to the extreme high and the extreme low Boolean variables and checking where that condition is true. So say I turned our extreme low here into a plot variable, you'll notice that this will now scan for places where this condition is true only. It ignores even the bull and the bear signal. So let's go ahead and test that. If I click OK here, let's take this back to the weekly time frame run this scan. Now our list is much larger, 113 stocks. If we choose something here, maybe let's say Airbnb and let's come into Airbnb here on a weekly time frame chart. Inside of Airbnb, we see we are in fact in the extreme lower part of the ROC indicator. So this is how we've scanned for if the ROC is within a certain region, but we don't necessarily see that bull signal plotting. So hopefully through this short, but hopefully helpful tutorial, you learned how to take the ROC indicator code and turn it into a scan where you're scanning for either the bullish or the bearish signals, or even if the ROC is in one of these extreme regions where it's now starting to reverse in terms of the direction that the ROC has typically been going in. Hope you found this tutorial useful. Take care everyone, good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.